When a new rider season is announced, there's usually quite a lot to look forward to. Seeing the main rider suit is always a treat because we'll know what our main visual will be for the next year, but even after we get our first look at our titular rider and any new riders, there's always something else I'm really looking forward to, the henshin. There's something so exciting about not just seeing our riders in full form, but seeing how they get into this form as well. The complex concepts of rider lend themselves to some incredibly creative transformation sequences, and when they're done well, they provide just the right amount of energy, momentum, and hype to celebrate the arrival of these memorable masked heroes. Across the franchise, we've seen a lot of different styles of rider henshins that are pretty indicative of their places in history. So, what specifically goes into making a great common rider henshin sequence? Well, that's what I want to go into today. This video will more or less echo the points I made in my Hasbro Morphs video, but I want to break down the different distinctions and nuances that come with rider transformations specifically, while also shining a light on some of the best transformations we've had throughout the franchise. So, without further ado, let's henshin and get to it! Very similarly to Sentai Transformations, the henshin sequences of Rider need to have momentum, thematic relevance, and creativity. In terms of thematic relevance and creativity, I'd say that the main points for both franchises are pretty much identical. The transformation sequence needs to share a connection to the Rider's overall theme, that way it doesn't feel too random or less thought out. In terms of momentum, we've seen quite a journey of how Riders get from point A to point B. In the early days of Rider, we tend to see the transformation executed through various styles of video cuts and manipulation, and often some disorienting strobing light and graphic displays. Given the technological constraints of that era, these were pretty quick, simple, yet effective ways to demonstrate the Rider transformation. I noticed that in the Showa era, due to the simplicity of the special effects, a lot of emphasis is placed on the gesticulation of the hand motions prior to the transformation. That in itself gives all of these tensions a very classic feel when the focus is more on the character than the flashy effects. Very vintage, very classic. Moving into the Heisei era, we see a bit of a transition between those older henshin styles and the effect-heavy ones we see today. I think Kuga and Agito were kind of the main transitional steps connecting the classic and modern styles. Kuga's and Agito's henshins were a bit simpler compared to most, but they were able to do more with the technology at the time to deviate from the cut-style transformations to the more integrated ones that Ryder is known for. Instead of having the camera cut to another scene where the transformation does or doesn't take place, we see the transformation happen in real time, adding that layer of consistency to the scene. From here, the evolution of Rider Henshin skyrockets exponentially. With the advent of CGI and the shows integrating it more into their scenes, the possibilities increase with just how much they can add to these transformation sequences. Within the first part of the Heisei era, while the writers start to lean into utilizing CGI, I think a key characteristic is how inventive yet simplistic they still can be. The Henshins of this era tend to be a bit more centralized and condensed closer to the writer, in comparison to the explosive nature of a lot of the second phase Heisei and Reiwa sequences. The reasoning for this difference is definitely another indicator of an era shift, the gimmick. In the second phase of Heisei, that's really where we see the emergence of the transformation gimmick and its role within the show and the sequence. Because a gimmick is usually a huge part of the season overall, its integration into the transformation usually results in a big and bombastic display of the gimmick itself and how it resolves itself into the writer imagery. It's really no surprise that the inclusion and empowerment of the gimmick within Rider lends itself to some truly creative transformation sequences that demonstrate advances both technologically and visually. Now, I mentioned earlier that Rider is known for its integration of its transformation sequences within the scene itself. This is a stark contrast to Sentai, where the transformations more or less rely on stock footage to put the sequences on screen. They, of course, perform their transformation motions and poses, and then it's a cut to the stock footage that shows them being enveloped in their powers. Rider takes this in a much different approach in the fact that most if not all of their henshins are done continuously within the scene. There's always an impressive lack of reliance on stock footage that makes it so iconically Rider. The main standouts are going to be of course the sequences of Saber and Gotchard, as both of these series rely on the CGI transformation stock footage quite heavily. Is that to say that one is better than the other? It depends. The stock footage gives a lot of freedom as to how they visually represent this transformation, and it makes it pretty easy to cut to the next scene as well. With Rider Henshin's, I think its seamless integration is its charm. The momentum built up from the beginning of the sequence is carried throughout because the need to cut away from the scene is not there. The transformations are happening in real time, in the moment, and that makes it even more impressive. You may notice that Sentai has taken note of this and applied it to their own main Henshin sequences as far back as Go Busters and as recently as King Oger, and there's such a noticeable fluidity in the scene when something like this is executed. So, we've already established that the main charm of Rider Henshin's lies in its non-reliance on stock footage and its seamless integration within each scene. Now, how is this done from season to season? Well, there's two ways this is generally done. 
One way is to have all the writers from the same season have the same Henshin style and transformation sequence. A very easy example of this is the transformation from Kamen Rider Ryuki. All the writers in this season share the same sound and sequence across the board, which is due largely if not entirely to the fact that they all utilize a V-buckle. While their contract beasts vary across each individual, the origins behind their powers and the underlying mirror concept is solidly held all throughout. The Ryuki Rider Henshin is incredibly simple anyways, so it kinda lends itself well to being a widely applicable and foundational part of the show's concept. While this first method is due to the belt being identical across all riders, the second method is going to be the complete opposite and pretty intuitive, which is having different belts within the same season. Especially with gimmick heavy seasons, having different belts that utilize the same gimmick gives a lot of different opportunities to showcase just how each belt and each rider interacts with each element specifically. It opens the gates for creative freedom and allows for henshin sequences that are often more thematically compatible with each rider, as riders may possess strikingly distinguishable elements while being under the same umbrella. This sense of individual Individuality among the uniformity creates for some great belts, great riders, and great henshins. Alright, we've got a lot of henshins throughout this vast franchise, and there are some that have stood out to me considerably among the rest. I don't necessarily have these in a particular pecking order, but these are ones that I thought have demonstrated riders' ability to put together some extraordinary transformation sequences. Let's get started, shall we? The first set of henshins I want to highlight are the ones belonging to the riders of Common Rider Build, specifically Build and Cross. Build's name is, as he stated himself, referring to the process of creation. Therefore, the henshin sequence revolves around the build driver taking the essence of the full bottles inserted and converting them into physical matter in order to form, or build, the rider suit. The way this is presented in particular is incredibly enjoyable. As a former Gundam nut, seeing the tubes extend from the build driver and formulate the pieces almost as if they were on Gundam runners was truly exciting. And as Gundam pieces are assembled, the rider armor bits slam together onto the user to present us with a complete product with a steaming finish. Although it's all CGI, this sequence is able to present an element of physicality and tangibility that pretty effectively establishes and executes its impact. Build tension does exactly what it says, it sets a foundation and builds up the anticipation for an amazing sequence that is bound to follow. Next up on the docket are the Dr. Riders of Common Rider X-Aid. Now I'm sure I wasn't alone in raising an eyebrow at the concept of this show. Doctors? As gamers? As Common Riders? This show took a very ambitious stab at a concept, making the threat a digital virus that required a heroic approach from a medical and gaming perspective. In that sense, the characters gained their rider powers from special games that were the only ways to deal with the bugster virus. When activated, the game loading screen would appear before them, and when their henshin was fully executed, a ring of characters would show up with the doctor selecting their respective rider. As questionable of a concept as this was, I always thought that this execution was so clever. It gave a lot of creative freedom for them to develop specific game aesthetics for each rider in Gashat, and of course, the character selection screen is such a nice touch. It's something that I didn't think would need to be there until I saw it. And we of course can't forget about the level up mechanic, taking our riders from their chonky Super Mario-esque forms into the rider image we know and love. The gamer henshins truly cleverly integrate gaming aesthetics into the sequence, resulting in a henshin that clears any level. Up next are the Oni riders of Kamen Rider Hibiki. Hibiki stands out from the rest of the franchise because it doesn't center itself on the belt for its transformation. Each of these riders utilizes a specific item, whether it be a tuning fork, a whistle, or a stringed wrist thingy. These items play into Hibiki's side concept, while the main visual and conceptual theme are demons, or oni, the accompanying theme is musical instruments, as each rider utilizes a specific instrument as their primary weapon, which also influences their fighting style. It's such a clever and unexpected thing to integrate into a concept like this. Each instrument is also appropriately embodied by a particular element, like the lightning guitar, the hurricane trumpet, and the blazing drums. By tapping into their changers, the riders become engulfed in their respective elements. With it being a non-traditional henshin device as well, the usage of the elements and the time it takes to get into the henshin make it feel natural, grounded, and powerful. The Hibiki henshins are a simple, effective, yet ambitious take on the traditional henshin sequence. Joining the fray are the henshins of the Zero One Riders. The theme of Zero One was artificial intelligence and higher technology. Therefore, the core mechanic and gimmick of the series were the Progrise Keys, small cassette-like devices that contained data based on animal DNA. When the Progrise Keys were inserted into the driver, the data would materialize into technological representations of each animal, with different elements becoming a part of the rider's armor. This was a very cool, albeit generic concept, but the more intriguing part of this was how each driver and organization interacted with the Progrise Keys specifically. Zero One, using his eponymous driver, shows a full sync between the user and the animal data. The riders of Ames, Vulcan, and Valkyrie using the Shot Riser load the Progrise keys like ammo, showing their usage of the keys as merely tools or weapons. And the riders of Metsubo Jinrai, Jin and Horobi, 
used the Force Riser, which, as the name implies, brutally restrains the animal data to their person. It was pretty creative to see how they interpreted the henshin sequence among these different organizations using the same gimmick, but embodying their personalities, moralities, and motivations. Zero One's henshins really put the high in high technology. A set of henshins that I definitely have already spoken about come from the Armored Riders of Kamen Rider Gaim. Gaim has a considerably interesting mix of concepts thrown into one package. First off, they're all dancers, which doesn't really play into my next couple of points very much, but I just thought I'd point it out. Secondly, as their name implies, they are riders most defined by the set of armor they don on top of their rider suit. This armor is determined by my third point, their gimmick, the Lock Seed, which is a lock-shaped fruit that is imbued with power from the Tree of Life. The most iconic thing about these henshins is how the Lock Seeds will summon a giant fruit from the sky, resting itself on the rider's shoulders and opening up to reveal and form the rest of the armor. This is an instant charm with this henshin. It's so creative and out of left field, as Rider tends to and needs to be. What adds onto this charm is a jingle that precedes the actual henshin. Gaim, Baron, and Ryugen are stylized very similarly to different cultures' warriors' armors, Gaim being Japanese, Baron being European, and Ryugen being Chinese. The jingles that play before the henshin are very characteristic of each culture, and I think that's such a simple yet impactful detail. The armored riders have henshins that truly unlock innovation with wonderful execution. Closing out our transformation elaboration are the henshins of the Zect Riders in Kamen Rider Kabuto. Kabuto is pretty special in that it is a two-parter henshin, much like X-Aid. The first part of the henshin is when the riders insert their sectors into their transformation mechanism. Once this is done, the sequence begins, and the riders become enveloped in an increasing sequence of hexagons that reveal their armored rider form. This is a very simple way to execute the change, the hexagonal patterns also give it a cool and very futuristic tech vibe. I do also think it fits pretty thematically as well, with the Zectors themselves being technological bugs, the riders' armor materialize on their bodies almost like a digital cocoon. And of course, there's the iconic cast off. Aside from Punch and Kick Hopper, the riders in Kabuto are able to cast off their armor to reveal their true selves, just as insects emerge from their cocoons to reveal their metamorphosed forms. This tension does it all. Its initial sequence is focused and localized on the rider, while its second stage is an explosive reveal. It's an effective prelude to the more bombastic change sequences we'd see in future iterations, while keeping these simple and classic at the same time. If belts and changers are the vehicles by which our riders begin their henshin journey, then the sequence itself is the road they take to reach their transformation destination. We've certainly come a long way from the early days of split cuts and transitions. I've always loved looking at these sequences in particular, and I'm always looking forward to see how Rider continues to transform their transformations for years to come. So that's my shtick on the henshin sequences of Common Rider. What are some of your favorite transformations? Let me know. Thank you again for watching. I'll be back next time with more fun Toku topics to Toku talk about. See you all next time.